She can't read the back of my head for some reason. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you. I hope that this will be a blessed time of worship for you today, whether you are here in person or joining online. It is good to be with you. If you have a prayer request you would like lifted up in worship today, there are a number of ways you can do that. Uh, you, if you are here in person, you can scan the QR code that is in the announcements. That will bring up a text message right to me. You can also text me directly if you have my number. If you're joining virtually, you can put your prayer request in the chat on Facebook or Zoom, and I'll be checking those, or you can share later in the service today. Our chancel flowers this morning were given with love in memory of Charlotte Dobbinspeck by Linda Smielowski. And thanks to those helping with worship, thanks to Nancy, who, you know. <laughs> we, got, we need to get the telepathy thing going. Yeah. Uh, our technical director this morning is Tom Graham. Our liturgist this morning is Barb Graham. And our anthem today comes from a women's ensemble uh, from the Handbells. So thank you to all of you. We will be having fellowship hour following worship today. Uh, we will not have it next week because of Father's Day, so get all your snacks in today. And if you enjoy fellowship hour, uh, we need hosts. And so you can sign up on the sign-up sheet on the deacon's table or by calling the church office. It doesn't need to be fancy, just some snacks and coffee and good fellowship. The nominating committee is also meeting after worship today, and we ask that you continue to prayerfully uh, keep them in your prayers as they are discerning who is called to be leaders of this congregation. The church office is closed Monday and Tuesday this week and will reopen on Wednesday at 9 o'clock, and office hours this week are 9 to 4.30. The Senior Adult Bible Study continues to meet on Monday evenings at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Karen Anderson is teaching that study, and they are going over the book From Dry Bones to Living Hope. This is a uh, short six-week study, uh, and each lesson is independent, and so if you miss one, if you didn't come last week, that's fine. You can come this week. If you have any questions, you can talk to Karen about that. The memorial service for Ida Miller will be this coming Saturday, the 18th, at 11 a.m., promptly at 11 a.m., at the Carousel Shelter at Alameda Park. We will have uh, a memorial service and then food and beverages and lots of fun. If you plan to come, it would be helpful if you could RSVP to the church office uh, so that the family could make uh, arrangements for the luncheon. So, uh, or if, let Marsh know, he's here. For those of you who are planning to volunteer for Vacation Bible School or other activities with children or youth, uh, it's probably time for you to update your clearances. It's been a while since we've done those. And so if you are unsure if you need to update yours, uh, you can give Ellen a call starting Wednesday and she can check for you and she can help you get those updated if needed. Or if you have clearances through somewhere else, we can uh, take a copy of those and that would be great. And also we're trying something fun this summer called Blind Date with a Book. There's a whole bunch of books over in the overflow area. There's some for kids and some for adults. They're wrapped and there are some clues written on them about what they're about. Uh, but you are encouraged to go look and see if one stands out to you. Check it out, take it home, read it. It's probably something you would never pick up on your own, which is the point. It's a blind date. Uh, and then there's a survey you can fill out whether or not you liked the book. Uh, and then you can do it again if you want. So if you're looking for something to read over the summer, feel free to take one of those. Are there any other announcements this morning? Hearing none, then I invite Nancy Dougherty forward and our graduates or the representatives. Good morning. Uh, 
Uh, we just wanted to take a moment to celebrate an important milestone. And actually, we have three graduates this year, two college graduates, Elizabeth Graham and Sammy Roth. And her mom's standing in for her today because she's already out beginning her new journey. And we're excited for both of them. And Noah Rieger also graduated from high school uh, recently, and he couldn't be with us today. Um, as I was thinking about this day and um, its importance, um, I was thinking about the years of you kids of running through the church and coming on Wednesday nights and singing in the chorale. And I wondered if you could share with us some of your thoughts about growing up. In the, I mean, just if you have just a special memory. I can, I can. I have a big mouth otherwise. So Lizzie and Sammy were together like all the time, all the time. Like we, uh, we found pictures. They were teeny. I said I want a picture of her and I. And we're going to put it side by side with the Lizzie and Sammy picture, because there must be like a hundred. <laughs> um, there couldn't have been a better place for them to be. They had fun together. They had fun with all the other kids. We went on tours with the Hill Youth Chorale. That was amazing, huh? Remember the duck. Do you remember the duck at Niagara Falls? Yes. <laughs> they had this stupid duck. It was kind of like the flat Jesus thing, but it was a duck. It was a stuffed duck, and they had to take pictures of it with them, the two of them, like just Sammy and Lizzie did that. <laughs> so it was just a great place for them to grow up and grow in the faith, but also have good role models and lots of friends. Yeah. Um I, I think that the best thing about all of the um, different you know groups and organizations here is you never grow out of them. If you are too old for one of the groups, you can still come back and help out and still get those experiences. And I think that that was um, one of my favorite parts because I started at Kids Club when I was little, little, and I still got to go every week when I was in high school. Um, and definitely want some of my favorite memories in high school were going on the corral trips and just going to see places that I might not have been able to otherwise. And I'm definitely thankful for all of those experiences and all of the people that contributed to those experiences. So. Um, before you step away, <coughs> I just wondered, um, is there, can you share with us where you think your, your next steps might be? or? Yeah, so I graduated from Allegheny College with a um, bachelor's in political science, and I am currently working um, as a paralegal at a law firm downtown. Um, I'll probably be there a few years, and then I will either go back to probably either law school or get my master's, some kind of grad program. So. Thank you. And you'll let us know what Sammy Yeah, and right now, Sammy is in Hancock, New York. She's at um, Frenchwood Theater Camp. She's the choreographer there. Um, so she's doing exactly what she went to school for, which was acting and a minor in dance. And she'll be there till Labor Day weekend. And then she's going to apply at all kinds of places, but also she's thinking about a master's program too, um, trying to get into one of the grad programs. Well, I know we'll all be keeping them in our thoughts and prayers as they step out into the, this next chapter in their lives. And um, we're excited for both of you. Um, I'm assuming you got to see the pictures. I, <laughs> my back was turned, so I didn't. But I, I was thinking of um, oh, on Wednesday evening, when you got, it used to scare me to death, but you would play hide and go seek in <laughs> yeah. the dark. I mean, it was pitch black in here. Yep. There's, and, a, there's a horror story with I it. know. <laughs> there, talk about that. No. <laughs> I didn't want to bring that up. But for the most part, it was, fun. it was fun. It was fun. So if you could join me and we'll have a short prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the blessing of being able to nurture and teach these young people. 
about how much you love and care for them. We pray that we have given them a firm foundation on which they may build. We ask that you would be with them and guide them as they step out into this next chapter of their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us now prepare our hearts to worship God.
Good morning. As the parent of one of the graduates, I just wanted to thank you all. You are truly our village, and you have helped us raise our kids and support our kids and love our kids. And this is such a wonderful place for them to grow up, and I just wanted to thank you all. Please rise, embody your spirit, and let us join together in our responsive call to worship. Here in this place, we are on holy ground. Here we sing songs of praise and repeat the stories of faith. Here we are inspired to respond to Christ's love. God called us here in whispering winds and burning flames. God meets us here in our vulnerability and our humility. Let us worship the great I am. Let's join together in our unison opening prayer. Holy Spirit, you have come among us to lead us in paths of righteousness. Guide our feet through the wilderness toward the living water of your grace, following in the steps of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen.
Sometimes God speaks to us in loud, astounding ways. And sometimes God speaks to us subtly. Sometimes God speaks to us through others, or through nature, or through unexplained events. However God speaks to us, God is always present, yet we don't always listen. Nor do we always do what God asks. And so today, God is asking us to set aside our excuses and to stand in vulnerability and humility. So may we respond to this request first by confessing our sins and our misdeeds. Let us pray together our unison prayer of confession. Merciful God, in the face of evil, with fear and hatred surrounding us, forgive our complacency and help us to do better. In the presence of the holy, with your spirit surrounding us, forgive our lack of notice and help us to be more aware. In the company of grace, which is freely ours through your love, forgive our hesitance to embrace it and help us to be more open to your mercy. Hear this prayer, O oh God, and hear us as we lift our silent confessions before you now. Hear our prayers, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Our God is a God of forgiveness, offering us again and again the invitation to know love and to respond by extending grace to others. In hearing that we are forgiven, may we rest in the assurance of God's peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> We do feel peace when we know that we are forgiven, so let us share that peace of Christ with one another. Those of you who are here, feel free to turn around and wave, and the peace of Christ be with you at home as well. If we have any of our young friends joining us at home, you're invited a little closer for a time, especially for you. And I've got some young friends coming up here, too. Yeah, I think it's the Plaid Twins. Look at you. Look at you. And Marley's coming with her light-up shoes. Perfect. Perfect. You want to come sit by your brother? I'm her brother. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm not her brother. I know that. So I, I, I oh. Hey, where are you going? So I asked, come down here with you. I asked Gabe if I could tell this story, and he said yes. So when Gabe was little, his foot didn't sit flat on the floor. His foot turned out like this and then in. So he walked like on the inside of his foot. It was kind of mis misshapen a little bit. Um, kind of, it was this foot. So out, and, but then you walked on this part of your foot. That's kind of silly, huh? Yeah, like that, kind of. Yeah. So is that how a foot is supposed to be? No. no. Yeah, it's supposed to be nice and straight, right? So we took Gabe to a special doctor called a podiatrist. Do you know what that means? Oh, kind of, kind of. You teach babies to walk. What were you going to say? It's a foot doctor. Yeah. A foot doctor. A doctor that only looks at feet. Can you imagine? Ooh. 
And it was a special, a, a kid's foot doctor. And so, and he was really cool. He was an old man and he always wore really neat bow ties. And so he asked Gabe to walk up and down the hall. And he said, okay, I see that. And do you know what his recommendation was? He's, to not wear shoes. He said, you know, when he's in places where he has to wear shoes, there were some special um, high quality shoes to wear. But he said, whenever possible, barefoot. What? I think I know where this goes in the Bible. Okay, well, hold on, hold on. Okay. Barefoot. So what, would, you like, would you like that to just walk around barefoot everywhere? Oh, I would. I would, yeah. Uh huh. I'd actually be nervous to do it because probably last time I was, I got stung on, on the foot by a wasp. You did get stung by a wasp on your foot. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, <laughs> yes. But so he told him to walk barefoot. Do you know why? Can you guess why? Because, like, I don't know. You don't know? What's your guess? You don't know. Okay. Because your foot, yeah. So when, when you're wearing shoes, can you feel the carpet? No. no. Can you feel the floor? I can't. No, no. You can I think it is like to feel. feel what, yes. I think it is to feel what you're walking on, so mm -hmm. you know like, how to walk, mm -hmm. when to walk. Exactly. When you're wearing shoes, all you can feel is your shoes. So, but when you're walking barefoot, you can feel the carpet or the cold floor. Have you ever been to the beach? and walk barefoot on the sand, you feel all the sand, it tickles, sometimes it's really hot. Yeah. And so that was what helped Gabe, was to walk barefoot, to help him feel the ground. So in our Bible story today, hey, listen, in our Bible story today, do you know what God tells Moses? <laughs> yeah. To walk barefoot to get the Holy Spirit. To walk barefoot. God, God tells Moses, take off your shoes and walk barefoot so that you can feel the ground because you're on holy ground. And so just like the doctor told Gabe, you don't have to wear shoes, God told Moses, don't wear shoes so that you can feel the ground and so that you know that I'm there. So it's coming up on summer, right, where we go barefoot a lot. I go barefoot a lot. Anytime you're barefoot, anytime you're not wearing shoes, I want you to think about how God told Moses to take his shoes off. And when you feel the ground, you're closer to God. Yeah? Um, grandma just walks, walks barefoot. Yeah? Your grandma walks barefoot? Mm-hmm. I like her. I like to be barefoot, too. Okay, let's pray. Can you repeat after me? Thank you, God, for giving us feet and letting us use them to feel the ground and to feel you. Help us to know you are near. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, everyone. You can go back to your seats. Let us pray. Triune God, just as you called Moses so long ago, so you call each one of us to speak and act on your behalf in our world today. Give us courage to step out in faith, to follow where you lead without hesitation or fear, trusting that your presence goes with us and that you will provide all that we need. Amen. Our gospel reading today comes from the gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14, from the Common English Bible. This is John's prologue about Jesus as the light of the world. Listen now for God's word to us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. 
the true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light, but the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. The word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you again to the Women's Ensemble for that piece directed by Nancy. Turning back now to the Old Testament, our Hebrew Bible reading today comes from the book of Exodus. We'll be reading from chapter 3, verses 1 through 15, also from the Common English Bible. This is the story of Moses hearing God speak through a burning bush. Listen again for God's word to us. Moses was taking care of the flock for his father-in-law Jethro, Midian's priest. He led his flock out to the edge of the desert, and he came to God's mountain, called Horeb. The Lord's messenger appeared to him in a flame of fire in the middle of a bush. Moses saw that the bush was in flames, but it didn't burn up. Then Moses said to himself, let me check out this amazing sight and find out why the bush isn't burning up. When the Lord saw that he was coming to look, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. Moses said, I'm here. Then the Lord said, don't come any closer. Take off your sandals because you are standing on holy ground. God continued, I am the God of your father, Abraham's God, Isaac's God, and Jacob's God. Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I've clearly seen my people oppressed in Egypt. I've heard their cry of injustice because of their slave masters. I know about their pain. I've come down to rescue them from the Egyptians in order to take them out of that land and bring them to a good and broad land, a land that's full of milk and honey, a place where the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites all live. Now the Israelites' cries of injustice have reached me. I've seen just how much the Egyptians have oppressed them, so get going. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I to go to Pharaoh and to bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, I'll be with you, and this will show you that I'm the one who sent you. After you bring the people out of Egypt, 
you will come back here and worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I now come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me, uh, sorry, excuse me, lost my place. Uh, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you. They are going to ask me, what is God's name? What am I supposed to say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. So say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God continued, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, Abraham's God, Isaac's God, and Jacob's God has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is how all generations will remember me. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are here on holy ground. But every place where you are is holy ground, and you are every place. Help us to be aware of your presence in the wilderness, in the light, and in the darkness. And help us to follow where you lead. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts gathered together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I was 14 years old when I was first called to ministry. And I didn't tell anyone. But eventually, my pastor noticed it too. And so one day, he called me into his office and he asked me if I had indeed heard the call. And when I said yes, he affirmed me. And from that day on, I became the sort of de facto pulpit supply for him whenever he was gone, which means that I started preaching when I was 14 or 15 years old. Now, if you ask anyone who was there back then, they may not remember whether or not I was any good. They probably don't remember what I said, but they almost all remember one thing. I always preached barefoot. Someone actually brought that up to me a couple weeks ago when I was home, talking about me preaching barefoot. I always preached and led worship barefoot. Now, I don't like wearing shoes, so part of that was a comfort thing. And that church is very laid back, and so it was no big deal. But the bigger reason for my barefoot preaching was because of this passage from Exodus, the story of God telling Moses to take his shoes off. This is when Moses first encounters God in all of God's mystery and wonder. This is Moses' call story when he first hears God's plan for him. So Moses was just called, I was just called. It made sense that I too should take off my shoes because I was also asked to proclaim God's word and I was standing on holy ground. Even though it was all so new and I really didn't understand what being called to ministry meant, I understood the gravity and the importance of the call. And I knew that I wanted to trust and obey God, but on my terms. So while I knew I was called, I, like Moses, pushed back. I said, sure, God, I'll do what you ask, but only after I do what I want first. So I went to college to study theater. And there, one of my professors began every single class by leading us in the ancient Chinese practice of Tai Chi. Tai Chi has a variety of purposes, but focus, but the focus is balance. Balance. A defensive martial art, Tai Chi uses slow, methodical movements intended to bring self-awareness both to what is happening externally as well as what's happening internally. And the goal is to balance the two, the internal and the external, or the yin and the yang. And this spiritual 
existential balance is the goal, and you achieve this by physical balance, by literally balancing as you do the choreography. You must be balanced in order to do those slow moves. And you do this by imagining your feet sinking into the ground, like your feet and the ground become one. And of course, the easiest way to do this is with your shoes off. Tai Chi recognizes the importance of the ground upon which you stand and your relationship with it. And a lot of Asian cultures have a particular, have particular practices when it comes to taking off your shoes, particularly when entering someone's home, but also in some places when you go into schools or shops or temples, it is expected that you remove your shoes in the entryway. And the primary reason for this today is hygiene, it's cleanliness. In some places, there is also a spiritual component to it. And another reason for removing your shoes when you enter someone's home is so that you, too, will feel at home. When we take off our shoes, things become less normal. Think about when you've been wearing shoes all day long and you get home and you take them off. Oh, it's a good feeling. We're more comfortable. We're able to be who we truly are. Now in this Exodus passage, it's not fully clear why God asks Moses to take off his shoes, other than the fact that he is standing on holy ground. We can assume that cleanliness was not the reason. They were in the desert. It could be because God wanted Moses to recognize the importance of that moment, to feel God's presence through that dust on the ground. It could be that God wanted Moses to get more comfortable, to not worry about what he was wearing or what he was doing, but to focus on God's word. And all of this could be true, I suppose, but in that moment, I think God commanded Moses to take off his sandals so that Moses could strip away everything that separated him from God. Like when Gabe was little, walking in his bare feet so he could truly feel the floor. Or like my classmates and me when we practiced Tai Chi, taking off our shoes and becoming one with what was beneath our feet. It brings awareness. It brings balance. God asked Moses to take off his sandals, removing that protective layer, and to stand before God full of vulnerability and humility and a lot of confusion, too. And in that moment, God, speaking through the flames of this burning bush, told Moses to set aside everything that divided them. And Moses kept trying to put up barriers, and every barrier Moses tried to put up. God, I don't know what to say. Why me? Who am I? Lord, what if they start asking questions? God always had a response every time taking the barrier down. God said, I'll tell you what to say. You are the one I choose. Tell them that I am the eternal God. I am the God of your ancestors. Time and again, Moses tried to put up a defense between himself and God, and every time, God took it right back down. Now, while the burning bush is unique, the way this call story plays out is not. All throughout Scripture, we see that when God calls someone for a certain task, they almost always push back, building up a wall full of reasons why they cannot possibly do what God is asking. And each time, God says, strip away all that is between us. Take down those walls and barriers and protective layers that you have built up 
so that you can see what I see in you. Let go of your questions and your doubts. Your excuses are empty. You are the one I choose. And this is not unique to biblical characters either. How many times have we been asked to do something and our immediate response has been why we can't? How often have we felt compelled to act on our faith but have let our doubts or our fears get in the way? When we sense the call to do something, so often we are just like Moses and all the others and say, why me? Who am I? And just as God said to Moses and to all the others, so God says to us, why you? Because I choose you. Because I see what's inside of you, even if you can't. Because I trust you. And I love you. Friends, God is saying this to each and every one of us today. We are so full of excuses. I'm too old. I'm too young. I've never done this before. I'm too busy. I don't think I can. I don't know what to say. I don't have the training. And sometimes these are valid reasons for saying no. But far too often, these are just excuses to get us out of doing something challenging or new. God asks us to serve in interesting ways, yet we continue to build up barriers. And we let our self-doubt hinder God's work through us. But what I've learned in my own life and what I've witnessed in Scripture is that when God calls you to do something, One way or another, you'll end up doing it. God is just that persistent. So friends, what are you placing between yourself and God today? Where do you need to take off your shoes and be more aware of God's presence? What do you need to strip away to be more open to hearing and responding to God's call? May we all be so bold as to move forward in our faith with bare feet, open hearts, and willing spirits. Thanks be to God. Amen. In soft breezes and in earthquakes, in deep exhales and in tongues of flame. God's spirit calls us to go into the world and to break the chains of oppression and injustice. One way we can do this is to give our gifts to the church so that they may be multiplied and used to care for God's children all over the world. To financially support the mission and ministry of Hill Church, you're invited to place your offerings in the plates near the entrances, drop them off during the week, mail them to church, or give electronically. Please rise in body or spirit as we join together in our unison prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Generous God, all that we have and all that we are belongs to you. As we give our tithes and offerings, accept them and use them in ways we could never imagine. May they be freed from the confines we place upon them, and may they be used to communicate your love to the world. Thankfully, we pray. Amen. remain risen as we join together in our unison affirmation of faith. Our affirmation today is adapted from a brief statement of faith written in the 1980s at the reunification of Presbyterian denominations to 
form our denomination, the Presbyterian Church USA. Let us, with one voice, proclaim the faith of the Church. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. The reunification and the creation of our denomination happened 39 years ago this weekend. Very exciting. As a community of faith, we come together and we share our joys and our concerns so that we can be in prayer for one another. Today we lift up Pat McCafferty. She's been having some heart issues uh, and spent some time in the hospital this week. And so we pray for her and her. Um, they were hoping that medication would fix it, uh, just a medication adjustment. But prayers for Pat. We also uh, continue to pray for Bonnie Bolton, and we give thanks that she is home after a stay in Concordia. And we uh, pray continued healing for her. We continue to pray for Nancy Llewellyn and Dale Anderson, both recovering from surgery. We pray for those we love who are living with cancer. We continue to pray for our treasurer, Lynn Gehring. We lift up Edna Makenauer, Burt Brewster, Kelly Kramlick, Tim Rafferty, Bob Ray, and Shirley Brown, who's here today. Yay! So wonderful to see you. We also lift up the Padicky family, and we pray for Mary. Her cancer has returned, uh, and she is beginning chemo again. And so uh, prayers for her. She's, she's very grateful for all of the prayers. We pray for those we love who are struggling with mental illness and addiction. We pray for our graduates as they embark on new uh, stages in life. We pray for our nominating committee as they continue to discern who is called to serve this church. And we pray for the larger denomination. Uh, General Assembly is beginning this week. It's a weird hybrid thing, and so it's for the next month, basically. Uh, but the first round of committees will be traveling to Louisville this week, and so we pray for travels and for discernment for the commissioners. Are there other joys or concerns to lift up this morning? Okay. Seeing none, then let us turn our hearts to God in prayer. Holy and gracious God, just as you welcomed Moses into your holy space, so you welcome us into this holy space. Not a space with a certain set of walls or coordinates of geography, but a space of worship, fellowship, and love. Although some feel more so than others, O oh God, any spaces and places in which we find ourselves is holy ground, because you, through the Holy Spirit, are with us wherever we go. God of wisdom and compassion, you speak to us through light, both through physical light, such as a bush set ablaze, and also through the light of your word, our Savior. Jesus. Yet even though we know this light, many of us and many of your children still live in the midst of darkness. And so today, God, we ask for your healing light, for your peaceful light, for your loving light upon those we named here this morning and those we silently lift before you now. God, we also pray for the darkness within each of us. We each face many struggles personally, such as illness, abuse, addiction, loneliness, isolation. And we also both intentionally and unintentionally bring darkness upon others with our careless words, 
thoughtless actions and participation in unjust systems. And we pray, God, for the darkness of our world, for a planet that is dying, for the hoarding of wealth, for war and famine, for all of the problems which we have brought upon ourselves. Loving God, we ask that you fill us with your light, personally and collectively, that we may reframe our thinking, that we may be aware of your holy presence with us. We thank you for the ways in which we have known and understand you. We thank you for your word, which has opened our eyes to your truth. We thank you for the language that has brought your transcendent, timeless, mysterious nature within our grasp. Light of the world, spirit of wisdom, great I am. Hear this prayer and hear us now as we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise in body or spirit as we sing God's praises together. this time of worship, you leave one holy space for another. May you be revived by the Spirit. May the Spirit lead you into places of new discovery. May you find even the smallest glimmer of hope when you face despair. And in all your living and breathing and being, may the strength, peace, and compassion of God be in all you say and do. In the name of the triune God, fountain of love, word of truth, spirit of power, go in peace to serve others with joy. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God that will never let you go and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen. <laughs> 